welcome to yet another episode. <laughs> and for once, it's us in the present instead of us in the past. Absolutely. We'll maybe get to that later, but we'll see. Um, one of the things we've had to do recently is acquire some more storage because all these videos we make um, take up a lot of storage. We've already used eight terabytes. For those of you who aren't in the computer business, that's 8,000 gigabytes. <laughs> Uh, this takes us up to 10 terabytes or 10,000 gigabytes of stories. So, um, so I just want to say, uh, excuse, <coughs> so I just want to say a special thank you to our coffee supporters and others who have donated to help us acquire this. They're not mega expensive, but they're not mega cheap either. No. Um, so thank you, coffee supporters. They are indeed. You're helping keeping the videos going, and we are doing our best to get more done. One of the problems we've had is just getting the time to go out. And we haven't been going out anywhere near as much as we want, have we? No, um, it's mainly because, um, you know, we do have a job while we're here. And um, when we're not working... <laughs> also got the weather. And when we're not working, we're going over to see Mum Bev's mum. However... Yeah, see, we've got job, we've got weather and we've got my mum. We can cope with any two out of three. The problem is we've got all three. <laughs> but... What we've done is we've both um, gone down to a four day week. Mm -hmm. So that still leaves two days to look for your mum. And then hopefully... To be fair, we were on a four day week, but you tended to work Wednesdays, I tended to work Thursdays, I, you tend to work Fridays, and then I was on Saturday and so on. So yeah, but now we're going to have the four day week together. <laughs> yeah, so we both work Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays or something like that. And Saturdays. Yeah. So, you know, so we're both going to be saying that we're working on the same days. <laughs> and then that means that we've got three days off. Two days for your mum and one day Thank for us. Hey. Oh, my God. So that's hopefully going to be good. Uh -huh. uh, another good thing that's happened is um, my mum's will is finally sorted. I can tick that one off. I'm no longer the executor. Woohoo! <laughs> so... Um, I mean, say, my brother has um, got the farm and everything, but it does mean... Oh, that I, I just point out, he has literally got the farm, because that's that's a euphemism among American soldiers means that you're dead. You've bought the farm. Oh, OK, well... <laughs> OK, fair I mean, enough. He's literally got the farm. <laughs> yeah, where my mother lived. But there was a little bit of spare money that uh, has been uh, left to us girls. Um, so uh, you will be seeing the results of that in the next episode. Grandma, the Grandma Memorial Book Projects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I spend my mum's money on the, on the boat. <laughs> but, uh, and um, just, before anybody quest, just before anybody points it out, uh, that spend will not be going in new jeans. This is my jeans for doing things because today's job is to do under the boat and the dinghy. So I'm not wearing my finest jeans for it. Yeah, so um, that's what we're going to get on with, and I uh, hope you uh, enjoy our messing about with boats. You forgot to point out what's wrong with the dinghy. Oh yes, it's uh, <laughs> it's minor error. It's deflated as always. We repaired it some time ago, and we took a video of it. I mean, it was about two years ago or something. <laughs> it was a long time ago, and we're not sure we can find the video of that. Um, you know, in the ten gigabytes, ten terabytes, whatever it is, but. We have a fair idea where it's going, but we need to reinflate it, drop it in the water, see where the bubbles come out. They're not big. I mean, it takes about a week and a half to two weeks to go down, so it's not exactly urgent. It has but it's, been, but it's been sitting there for four months, so it's gone down a bit. The other task we're doing is for years we have secured the dinghy using a line that runs up to our mast. And um, what we've decided to do is alter that slightly because it's an absolute devil to tie the thing off, isn't it? What we want to do is we want to make sure that the uh, dinghy is quick release on everything. Yeah. So that, Whereas you know, previously we'd like not stay on pick. Exactly. So I, I want it to be able to, if I have an issue, I want it quick release. At the minute the dinghy is held on with a couple of spring lines on board and snap clips. Yeah, so hopefully we'll test that out later. And, and the is. purpose of this one is we're going to add this cleat to tie the bridle that holds the dinghy on the back of the boat. Um, it doesn't take a lot of strain. If I undo everything now, the dinghy probably won't fall off the boat. It, it does tend to sit where it is. So this is really just to hold it in place in a seaway. That's all. But generally speaking, the dinghy doesn't move anyway, does it? No, but um, we haven't tested this new setup, let's be honest. Not like, uh, no. not like the old setup. <laughs> We can always go back to the old setup. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, we've got something. Right. Okay, well, let's, uh, no more ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so who's making the tea?
Yeah, well, that's what we're trying to put the cleat in for. I know. Okay. Come back here. Hey, she's in. Oh. <laughs> Than I well, I can bring you in on this one. Yes. Tell you what, give me the gear for time. You want this one, yeah? Yep. Don't forget that's not on its extension. <laughs> it is now. Okay. Right, turn the wheel please. You might need to unclamp it. Right. Let me just clamp it. Okay. It's clamped now. The, uh, the deck brush on it first, yeah? Because it's the more aggressive brush. It is. <laughs> it feels like we've been to sea. Dennis up tidying, putting things away, sorting out the dinghy. I'm down below getting lunch on the go and the rest of it. It's not as good as being to sea, but it's not bad. I can cope with this. It's but, a start. Yeah, it's a start. But just to answer uh, a little point, or to reinforce the little point I made earlier, <laughs> this is why I'm wearing my scrubby jeans and not my good ones. <laughs> The latest fashion accessory from the back of the boat. <laughs> I think it's time for lunch. dinghy back with our new um, cleat so this is our bridle and now the bridle comes down through the hole and onto our new cleat here um, so that's dead easy then we've got a couple of lines which do the cross bracing this we use for the hoist when we need to hoist the dinghy but we've got lines attached to it so that means it's crossed and then we've got lines, this one and that one, which I'm afraid to say we have to do again, which are to the keeping it in. So as far as we're concerned, this is uh, fantastic. Now all I've got to do is find somewhere that I can put these lines because they're just trailing in the water at the moment. Oh. Well, <coughs> I've been out uh, shopping. Haven't got an awful lot just yet. But Excuse me, it's quite a pile. Well, yes, but, um, you yeah, know... Got all that camera gear. That's old stuff. <laughs> anyway, I bought myself a new inclinometer. Us, a new inclinometer. The boat got a new inclinometer because the one that's right behind me has gone milky with UV damage. Yeah, so I've got to find a way that um, protects it from UV. Um, but um, we've got one that can at least do the replacement. I've already told her the secret way to do it, which is cover it up. My, my own personal one is Fips Factor 50 sun cream. <laughs> Don't knock it, it might actually work. 
It might well work, but the thing is, I do actually want to see the balls moving about, please. <laughs> I see. You like seeing rolling balls, do you? I do, I do. Let's not go there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I bought myself, um, well, it's actually for our cooker, a whole load of grommets. Now, we only need one lot of grommet, one size of grommet. It was actually cheaper to buy nearly two, 300 grommets than to buy a packet of 10. It was ridiculous. Yep, it was. And also the sizing codes for grommets are not really random, but not really very clear either. And so with this here and a lot of guarantees, rather than purchase the wrong size a couple of times, and like she said, band 10 of them is as expensive as band. They say like you buy a grommet at 50p each, 10 of them is like five pound. This was six. Um, and, and like, you get 50. And you get 50 of them. So no contest. Yeah, uh, so we've got the comet grommets for the cooker and we've got grommets for other things. No idea what we're going to use them for, but we've got them. If we had already called our cooker Katie, I'd have to rename her Wallace. Oh, because it's Wallace, Wallace and, and Gromit. Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> no, our cooker's called Katie. Um, we got, I got a cit citronella candle. Right, okay, this is not a scented candle. Well, it is a scented candle, but it's not a scented candle in the thing that you light it and surround yourself in, on the bath and then breathe in all the fumes and pass out from carbon dioxide insulation. This is to repel bugs. When we're, when we're in places like Scotland where there are lots of bugs. Anywhere where you've got still water, even here at the marina, when the water is still, we do get midges. And, um, do, do we? Only a few because it's always a wee bit windy here. And it's brackish uh, and salty. Uh, yeah. But, but, but if you're up the Crinan Canal, it's like midge central up there, isn't it? Well, that's particularly midge central, but uh, there's quite anywhere where you get still water, you will get midges. We bought our last one of these in the Outer Hebrides, Barra. Exactly, a long time ago. So, mm -hmm. um, so we've got ourselves a new scented candle. Citrone mm -hmm. Citronella is the. Uh... And also, it was somebody's birthday recently. Oh yeah. No, no. This is what we got. We got a Chateau Neuf du Pape. Yes. Now, for any of you who watch YouTube sailing channels in any depth. We need to maybe step back and look at the South Sea Islanders of yesteryear. They used to be a thing called the cargo cult. When Westerners came to their islands, like maybe even 50 years ago, some of these some of these islanders, like in Papua New Guinea, had never seen a European. And they noticed things. They noticed that when the Europeans built an airport, airplanes came and landed at it. When they built a harbour, ships came and docked at it. Um, so they had this thing called the cargo cult and they would dig up bits of the jungle and make like a fake runway on the grounds that it would attract airplanes, airplanes bring cargo and they'd all be rich. It's wonderful. We've started our own cargo cult. We have noticed that a certain YouTuber only drinks Chateau Neuf de Pap. So we reckon that if airports attract airplanes and harbours attract boats, Chateau Neuf de Pap will attract our certain YouTuber. Well, if it, if it lasts in the locker that long. <laughs> that is the downside to the plan. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I also got a uh, tap and die set. Uh -huh. uh, so um, that should be uh, useful for when I need to tap and die. I originally thought it was to do with dance, but there you go. <laughs> but being uh, salty lasses, we have not been uh, a complete spend of holics, have we, Bevy? No, we've managed to get something for free. And we want to say a special thank you to Brian, who works up in Boson Bobs. Um, he put us in the way of a used laser boom. Now, it's got corrosion issues. That's why they're throwing it out. But it's the boom of a laser dinghy. And we have wanted for some time to have a whisker pole. Not, not, not a big spinnaker pole, because we don't have a big spinnaker. No, we don't. As you know, we only have a small... Cruising chute sort cruising of affair. Cruising chute affair. And um, we just need to pole out our... Genoa sometimes, don't yeah, we? But because the Genoa is made for heavy weather and it's heavy material, in light winds, we it, fall, it collapses under its own weight. We need to hold it out. So our, in the past, we've sat there with a boat hook, literally holding it out. And we've decided we don't want to do that. So we've managed to get ourselves a little sort of whisker pole affair. So we've, we've got the pole. There's going to be some surgery on it. It, it, it needs fixing. It has got corrosion and stuff like that. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, we got it for nothing. So And we can cut the corroded end off and it will fit. It'll fit our reefed Jenny. Because people think we're mad. In light wind sailing day, we reef the Jenny. And they say, no, you reef in heavy weather. In light weather, you get all your sails out. But if we do that, the sails collapse under their own weight. 
Uh, but also, um, you've got to remember that ours is a Genoa, so it's 125%. So reefed, it's uh, just same as a jib, really, isn't it's, it? It's like a jib. It's just either 100 or just under 100. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So so this will be another little project coming up. So we've got a few more measurements to take and then the, uh, the, the angle grinder will be coming out and it will be getting... Sliced and diced. <laughs> <laughs>